Hello, and welcome to my series on the CT of thoracoabdominal emergencies. I'm Dr. Benjamin Strong, the Chief Medical Officer of Virtual Radiologic, or VRAD. I started my career with an internal medicine residency and followed that with three years of work as an emergency physician. I then returned to training for a radiology residency and a fellowship in body and MSK MRI. In the course of my over 20 years in radiology, I have worked as a private practice radiologist, an academic radiologist, and for the last 17 years as a teleradiologist for VRAD. I have been the chief medical officer there for eight years and am licensed to practice in all 50 states. Here is our agenda for this series, which I have broken into nine sessions of eight cases each, all grouped by organ system. Session four, small bowel emergencies. We'll start with a case of polysplenia with malrotation and perforation, as is frequently the case with these cardiosplenic syndromes. There is a right upper quadrant spleen that is multilobulated, a midline liver, and there is the gastric fundus in the right upper quadrant. A little lower down, you can see the characteristic preduodenal portal vein. Note its relationship to the duodenum, which is coming across from right to left. And there is a focus of contained extraluminal gas, probably retroperitoneal which you'll see is related to this bowel malrotation. There is the extraluminal gas right there. And the bowel malrotation is really visible here in the right abdomen. These are redundant loops of duodenum all stacked into the right upper quadrant there, or uh, right retroperitoneum, prior to crossing over as the third portion of the duodenum. So clearly a malrotation. It doesn't have the distinct uh, second and third portions of the duodenum, as you'd expect. So there are the spleen and the stomach, the preduodenal portal vein. And now watch the loops of small bowel. See how they go around and around before crossing the midline. And then ultimately, there is the perforation with associated stranding. So that is a case of polysplenia with malrotation and an associated perforation. Our next case is an SMA syndrome with bowel ischemia, pneumatosis, and portal gas. So here you see the portal venous gas extending to the periphery of the liver as is typical, and pneumatosis of the gastric wall. More inferiorly, the diagnosis is clear when you see the pneumatosis affecting the duodenum and also its obstruction right in that third portion of the duodenum, typical of SMA syndrome. Note the marked gastric distension. Note the patient is cachectic as well. There's the portal venous gas duodenal pneumatosis and obstruction. Right, typical in cachectic patients, uh, rather spectacularly, this patient did survive. So that is SMA syndrome with obstruction, ischemia, and portal venous gas. Our next case is a mycotic superior mesenteric artery aneurysm. Note the mitral valve replacement, a very important finding always included on abdomen and pelvis CT scans and a very important diagnostic clue. This patient is clearly at risk for endocarditis as well as distal embolic phenomena. So that's something I try to note on every case. There is a subcapsular splenic fluid collection, which in these circumstances is concerning for an abscess. And lastly, distally along the course of the superior mesenteric artery, there is a focal irregular dilation with significant surrounding stranding. 
and distal occlusion of the SMA consistent with a mycotic aneurysm. So there is the mitral valve replacement. Splenic collection suggestive of abscess. Now follow the SMA. Here you see it dilate and then it's distal occlusion. That is a superior mesenteric artery mycotic aneurysm. Look at the course of the SMA one last time. There it is. All right, mycotic SMA aneurysm. Again, note that mitral valve replacement uh, really can tip, tip you to a number of entities. Our next case is a thromboembolic ischemic bowel. The key here is this splenic hypodensity. It's peripheral, it's well circumscribed. It is a classic microembolic infarct. That should set you looking more distally here. You can see the superior mesenteric artery is occluded with thrombus. In the pelvis, there is significant thickening of the small bowel wall with stranding, suggesting enteritis, in this case, obviously ischemic. So here again, the peripheral hypodensities in the spleen. And follow that SMA. And there you see its occluded segment. So this is a patient who had a cardiac source of interest on delayed images, the splenic hypodensities had resolved. Do not let that dissuade you from the accurate diagnosis of a thromboembolic ischemic bowel. Our next case is a bariatric surgery patient with postoperative ischemia. You can see here the proximal aspect of the gastric staple line with contrast passing into the transplanted small bowel loop. These left abdominal bowel loops are showing significant pneumatosis, always indicative of ischemia in these patients. In addition, you can see the superior mesenteric vein, probably the best indicator for volvulus and vascular obstruction, uh, given its thinner walls and lower pressure. In addition, there is actually occlusion of the SMA as well, slightly more distally. All of this uh, spelling a very dismal picture. This is a common complication. There is the staple line, which is intact. Watch the superior mesenteric vein vanish and then the superior mesenteric artery vanish. We'll let that run through again. We've got a good gastric staple line with passage of contrast into the small bowel loop, but pneumatosis in the left abdomen and vascular occlusions centrally. Very nice example of a postoperative Peterson hernia with volvulus and obstruction of the superior mesenteric vessels. Our next case is hereditary angioneurotic edema, which I didn't have room to type there, but here you can see hypodense bowel wall with stranding extending into the mesentery. This is in a pretty typical location involving the proximal small bowel uh, jejunum there on the left side of the abdomen. The differential on that is, of course, inflammatory and ischemic enteritis as well as small bowel hemorrhage. So that is a case of hereditary angioneurotic edema. A C1 esterase inhibitor is the uh, pertinent absence here. Our next case is of mural hemorrhage of the small bowel. I like to point out these valve replacements. This patient is at risk for embolic phenomena, but also hemorrhage, given the high level of anticoagulation many of them require. 
And there is extensive hyperdense small bowel thickening and extensive mesenteric stranding and fluid as well. There again is that aortic valve replacement. Now the extensive small bowel wall thickening present throughout a very long stretch of bowel. You've got this on a coronal too where the extent can really be appreciated. There's the bowel wall thickening and the mesenteric stranding. So that is a case of mural hemorrhage of the small bowel. Our next case is a closed loop obstruction. This is a surgical emergency and it's a particular type of obstruction that's very worth noting specifically. So there is extensive uh, mesenteric stranding as well as a central point of convergence of the mesenteric vessels and stranded mesentery. In addition, there is bowel wall thickening in a peculiar distribution. The bowel always appears to be accordioned together, uh, stacked one on top of another. And again, all converging to a central point around which it is twisted. So there is that point. You can see that sort of stacked appearance of these very turgid small bowel loops. And that is a classic appearance of a closed loop obstruction. Again, a surgical emergency. And that concludes session three, emergencies of the small bowel. Thanks for watching.